resolved that the Democratic Party does explicitly declare that after four years of failure to restore the Union by the experiment of war, the Constitution itself has been disregarded resolved in every that we approve and, and applaud the practical and wisdom of Abraham Lincoln, that we approve especially the proclamation of emancipation. And if your nation devoted to freedom but wary of war, do you see that the war is moving in a positive direction in the sense of preserving freedom and reuniting the nation? Or do you see the war dragging on and on without resolution and therefore suing for peace or peace with honor? Lincoln had to be reelected. If the North had any hope of persevering, the 64 election was really key. Though ravaged by four years of civil war, the United States dared to hold a national election in 1864. Four years earlier in 1860, the majority of Minnesotans, voting in their first presidential election, had chosen Lincoln. Within months of his election, southern states began seceding and civil war broke out. The war turned out to be much harder and longer than most could possibly imagine. In 1864, Lieutenant General Ulysses Grant, handpicked by President Lincoln, suffered a staggering loss of men in the Overland Campaign. Newspapers referred to him as Butcher Grant. Those elections were hard fought in the newspapers. They are so partisan, and often they will even say, Democrat in the title or Republican in the title. The Democrats nominated President Lincoln's former general, George McClellan, and adopted a peace platform that would rescind Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation and ensure that slavery would survive in the South. With women not yet allowed to vote, the election rested on 800,000 Union soldiers. Both parties courted their vote resolved that the thanks of the American people are due to the soldiers and sailors of the Army and Navy who have periled their resolved lives Resolved that the sympathy of the Democratic Party is heartily and earnestly extended to the soldiers of our Army and the seamen of our Navy. There was fear that over half of our eligible voting population would eventually be mobilized. There was discussion, should soldiers working under the president be voting for their boss, or such soldiers whose job it was was carrying out the policy of the nation, be voting on that policy. Much bigger question was, hey, huge percent of our voters are out of state. What are we gonna do here? Their solution was to send commissioners out to where our soldiers were. Those commissioners then had the responsibility to get ballots into the hands of Minnesotans. Just months earlier, Lincoln had called up another 500,000 men to join the Union. Many were draftees, as enthusiasm among the earlier volunteers waned. The first Minnesota in particular, when they came home in February 1864, very few of them, only around 60, wanted to re-enlist. They had had enough of all of this. In Minnesota, the Democrats were a strong party. It's also that the Republicans weren't just against slavery. The Republicans were also against alcohol. They were also against immigrants. Stearns County, for example, which is almost completely German in 1864, goes almost completely Democrat. And I don't think that that's anti-Lincoln, but I think it's anti-prohibition. And I think it's pro-immigrant. So the issues on the ground were much more complicated than they were nationally. But late victories on the battlefield, aided by two Minnesota regiments, translated to votes for Lincoln at the ballot box. The first battery of Minnesota Light Artillery and the second and fourth Minnesota Volunteer Infantry fought in Union General Sherman's campaign that led to the fall of Atlanta in September 1864. Victory in Atlanta came at, in a sense, just the right time for Lincoln to help give the nation a sense that victory was possible. Not easy, not immediate, not tomorrow, 
but possible. In Minnesota, voters gave Lincoln a decisive victory, 59% to McClellan's 41%. Even St. Paul's weekly Pioneer and Democrat newspaper reported that with Lincoln's re-election, slavery was finally dead. So far then, as the North is concerned, slavery is a doomed institution. So those Minnesotans who died of disease or who were injured badly or were killed on the battlefield, all of their sacrifices gave Lincoln the political momentum he needed to be reelected and then to be able to finish and prosecute that war. At his second inaugural on March 4, 1865, Lincoln laid out a vision for the nation after the war. Let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow and his orphan. I'm often giving tours of our state capitol. It was built with statues, murals, paintings, plaques on the inside to remind us about the sacrifice of those Civil War veterans because they are the ones who paid for our state capitol. I think it's one of the most beautiful buildings in the world. To do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations.